you and it's Uncle Jimmy with Jimmy's Train Station Travel Adventures and today we are going to be filming something all weekend and you're familiar with it it's one of my favorite things we're up in Cherry Hill New Jersey to Monster Mania and today we're going to be getting autographs and uh and all weekend and and then last night we got here on a Thursday and we're at our hotel here in in uh Voorhees New Jersey which is uh real close to Cherry Hill to the to the convention and we're staying at a Spring Hill of Marriott and uh we got in last night Thursday met up with our friends Eddie and Nick from New York and we went around uh toy shopping looking for figures to get signed all around the toy stores had a blast went went out to eat at red lobster and today uh we're gonna meeting up around noon at the uh, convention to get in line for brad dorf because we figured the line's gonna be very long and those not familiar brad dorf he played chucky and all the uh chucky horror movies on uh, does the voice for chucky and his daughter fiona's there getting her autograph we've got uh the lady he played on uh Ted Bund or uh, not Ted Bundy, I'm sorry, Al Bundy show as Peg, and, and in Futurama as one of the cartoon characters, and uh, I got a figure for her to sign. Uh, we've got uh, Leah Shea uh, played in uh, all the uh, Insidious movies. Um, we have uh, John Cleese that played in all the Monty Python movies and played as the Dark Knight, and many, many more. And uh, we're just going to have a blast, get our autographs. Uh, hang out with our friends eddie and nick and and do some more uh restaurants in the evenings and uh, we always hit chinese we might do pizza tonight we always have fun and so i ask you follow us and if you're watching this please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already hit the like button uh, uh blow it up I'm trying to grow i uh, appreciate everyone who follows me and uh so hit that subscribe button for me it's really important to help my channel grow right now we're in our hotel me and my son my son forbes is with me as usual uh we're, we're going to be going swimming here for a little bit i want to take him swimming before we go to the convention and then uh we'll get ready and head over probably get our tickets at noon and get in line right away because it's going to be a long wait for uh for brad dorf and i've got two two chucky figures to get signed myself so as always at the end of the weekend uh we'll do our uh reveal of all we uh our haul of all everything we bought and received and a couple autographs my friend eddie got me uh really appreciate it. i'll show them and uh just gonna have a, a fun time so i ask you to sit back and watch us as we uh do monster mania this weekend so follow us on this adventure well, we finally made it here. We're at Cherry Hill, Double Tree Inn. We're early in line. I'm parked right here in the front, handicap. My, my son's right up there. Here with my friends from New York. We're going to get in line for Brad Dorf. Uh, Got to stay in line early. It'll be about a four hour wait. Got our tickets, our weekend band. Get him done early so we can get it over and done. and had the rest of the evening so we don't waste a whole bunch of time just him so follow us on this adventure hey everybody boy are we pooped <laughs> we stood in line well we've been to the convention since 11 o'clock this morning waiting in brad dorf's line chucky to get his autograph and i got a few more i got his daughter fiona real nice girl um real polite took pictures with her and 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 did some other autographs got them out of the way but we got more long lines to stand in tomorrow and i didn't get to film at all today because we was just in line too long but I, I promise you we will go around and film and film the vendors and uh just give me time and get some more autographs tomorrow's a new day got friday over with we got two more days at the convention so follow us on this adventure day two saturday and we're standing in line for rainy 
get Ramey's autograph. And, and you can see we're here in line, and it goes down here, and it wraps around. It goes clear down the hallway, so we got about a, at least a two-hour wait before we even get in there. Eddie took off again. <laughs> so we're in here for friends Nick and Eddie and just waiting to get down there and get Ramey's signatures and then I gotta get Cleese, a couple others. So follow us on this adventure. Well, we made it in the pavilion. Uh, I got a couple autographs. Got John Lovitz over there, got him. In line here for Sam Raimi. Don't know how long it's going to be. At least we're closer. Done paid for his autograph. Lynn Shea, I want to get her, but she's over at uh, taking a break, lunch break. I got to get uh, John Cleese yet. So it'll be a while. That's all we've been doing, right, Eddie? Standing in line. Exactly. Lines, lines, lines. So, get around, we'll look at the vendors later, get my last few autographs. Yeah, I ain't going to be able to afford anything at the vendors time I get all my autographs. It's been quite the adventure. Second day. One more day. Get my autographs done today, then it'll be easy. We'll go out to eat, Q&A's tonight costume contest like go out and have some chinese later look for the twins yeah <laughs> it'll be a little relaxing <laughs> after this a few more autographs and we're done so follow us on this adventure look behind you a little cosplayer <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're back. We're looking around the vendors. Second evening. Five hundred dollars. Wow. Put mine in for money to get. Yeah, get that. Five hundred dollars. Sorry. That's also Trick or Treat Studios. Right. So yeah, we're finally going to look at some vendors right now. I got three autographs to get tomorrow, and I'll be finished. Got to get John Cleese, the guy played in Tremors. What's his name? Do you even know his name? Some loser from Tremors. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to get... Uh, I got to get Fiona tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> and Lynn Che I got to get from uh, Insidious. Yeah, she ever goes to the table. Yeah. But I'm glad I only got three left. They better come out of that box and slice me for 500 Yeah, right. Five hundred dollars for that salt figure. I'll do it if he gets announced for a con. There's the old, uh, there's the mask we wore at Halloween, Nick. Look, exactly. that's telling how old we are. They're only fifteen dollars each. That's yeah, they're pretty cool. What kind of Halloween costumes we had for us when we were little. <laughs> Man, everywhere I go, I see that Farmer Vincent figure. I want it so bad. It's telling you to get it. I know. It's only 35. <laughs> Betty Page figure for $90. <laughs> Got you, bro. I have both of these. Do you? You got the one that talks? Yeah, both of these I have. I don't have that one. Yeah, look at that. That's cool. Alien. Enjoy, my dude. I keep saying I'm gonna get one of them big Michael figures and get it autographed sometime, but that's a I, nice one. I, I was, that's the one I was trying to get Jamie Lee on. It just seems like I never had the money after the autographs. That's the problem. Come in here first. Yeah. But then you won't get no autographs. Yeah, and then I won't get no autographs. You're right. So you guys, you ever do this hobby? It's a great hobby, but it's not cheap. That's a nice one to get uh, Fiona and him on. 
<laughs> it's just not a cheap hobby. The owner was in that one, Cult of Chucky. And, and that one, Curse of Chucky. Well, that's a good price on it, really. I mean, oh, she's 40 she bucks. Is. Yep, there that's she is. See, that's what you want. Around. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Hey, <laughs> yeah, it's Halloween. What is that there if you press the button? Does it kill you? Well, push the button and see if it kills us. Go ahead. It don't do it nothing. It says I'm dead, so He's I'm dead. free. <laughs> <laughs> His batteries quit working. Father, see that? That Leonardo Funko Pop sign. Yeah, that'd be cool. Trying not to shop till Sunday, but I'm still going to look around. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Two Jasons. Hey, That's right. Check it out. <laughs> Walk around, see what they have. <laughs> you buy uh, tickets and win, the, win this Reagan doll here. Well, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> if you do, I'll take your autograph. <laughs> A lot of Funko Pops everywhere you go. Famous Living Dead dolls. Well, if you weren't, yeah, no, I smell it too, though. He smells it. I don't even smoke it. I'm always looking for shining ones because I like the shining. That's how it goes. How's it going? And plus, I got her straight and uh, booster. And the fucking cool little Halloween figure there. I'll be doing Oh, dude, that'd be so sick. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. 100% of it. I bought it. Only a match. Okay, it's something new to me. It's a female ash. <laughs> Look, sorry. Shirts, always t shirts. A lot of cosplayers. So that's the first vendor room they have. So follow us on this adventure. <laughs> so I'm just taking a okay. video. Oh, he's doing a video? Then check this. Yeah, get some cosplay going on. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
Look, there's the unmasked Michael Myers. <laughs> He's a happy Michael Myers. <laughs> I to do that. I want to do PayPal. I mean, yeah, you can PayPal. More cosplay. <laughs> Promised you cosplay. We'll look around and get some cosplay. If that one looks like it's in good shape, you could definitely take that one. That's like, you know, pick it up. Yeah. See what we can catch out here in the lobby as far as cosplay. Sure we can get some good ones out here. Got the terrifier here. Uh, <laughs> so excited. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Check this out. bit of cosplay going on. So follow us on this adventure. Looking around the vendors some more. How we get him at an airport so, and go? he disappeared. Doing more Steven Spielberg here. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get some footage or and we're not gonna stops, have a video. Yeah, stop talking to them. Yeah. And turn around. Okay, well, I got this job done. He likes to get air pressure. Yeah, oh, yeah. They don't last long, though. There's That's a gremlin one down there. They're just basically for show. Yeah, they are for show. They don't last long enough. I just get one I like and then keep spraying it with my own stuff. More figures over here. So tempted to buy this uh, Motel Hell Farmer Vincent. I like it. I keep looking at it. it means you should do it. I know, right? <laughs> Okay. The Jaws figure is pretty cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Put that in my bedroom, right over my bed. I have to this I'm so He's going to get See, you told that story. That is cool. I like the Freddy vs. Jason Shadowbox. Some nice figures. I like Shadowboxes. Uh -huh. We need stuff we can display, bud. That's not really. You know, I need display. space. Yeah. Because that's what I need. <laughs> There's no shelf big enough for that. <laughs> 
Shadow Bucks. Wonder how much he's got on the jaws. I'm in love with the jaws. Look at that. That's cool. They're, they're teasing me again with Farmer Vincent. Probably. Watch your language now. <laughs> He's gonna win the contest, nobody's gonna go. Yeah. Without a doubt. I put the Tom Atkins TV away, so. Man, that's a good mask, dude. You wanna go last? He's got his whole crew terrified. He's got a whole, whole uh, parade going on here. Check it out. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Amazing. Cool contacts. I like the contacts. Yeah. Uh, he looks Didn't he? He looks just like him, man. It's gonna be cool. That's a good mask. Yeah. Imagine We're, he came around. I bet that mask is expensive. I have an axe on. Yeah. That's awesome. Where's the twins? The twins. the twins? Yeah, where's the twins? <laughs> Can't have a parade without the shining twins. <laughs> <laughs> There's some, there's some good cosplayers this week. Yeah. 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 All right, we're getting ready to start the Q and A here at Monster Mania Saturday night, and it's uh. Fiona and Brad Dorf from the Chucky movies and Chucky series. Uh, so sit back and enjoy and we'll be with you momentarily and uh, enjoy the Q&A. So follow me on this adventure. Hopefully everyone had a good time today and I'm really, really happy with how things worked out. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce our first two guests tonight. Um, as you know, we uh, reached out just a couple weeks ago and uh, invited them to the show and we were very very fortunate to have them back they did our first show post covid and they were absolutely fan favorites so when i had the opportunity to welcome them back i was more than excited so please first a big round of applause for fiona doris <laughs> Fiona's the shy one in the room. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Good. Glad to see you. And our next guest, you might know as Fiona's father, please welcome Brad Dorif. So what we'll do is if you have a question, oh, do we have a mic for in the audience? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what? I'll give them, I'll give Jeff my wireless. What is going on with that space over there? <laughs> he wants that to be filled if you can. No, it's okay, but it's just odd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I don't know who was sitting there, but they weren't. Actually, on both sides. Yeah. Okay. You guys sit wherever you want to sit, you know? <laughs> I got it. No, no, it's for a reason. So if you, have a it. Moving on. if you have a question, just line up here in the middle and Jeff will give you the microphone and you can ask away. Don't be shy. And our first question. Hi. You're going to kick off the whole thing. No pressure. I know, setting the tone here. Um, my question is for Brad. Um, I hope this isn't a spoiler, but I think everybody's seen... Uh, Chucky season three part two's trailer and that there might have been a little cameo 
of um, Brad's character in the flesh, and um, I just wanted to know what that was like to return to that role after 35 years in a, a physical human form. Mm -hmm. Well, I was in. Wait, um, don't make sure you don't spill the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I um, actually was in um, uh, um, Curse, um, so it hasn't been that long. Um, having said that, um, it was fun, to tell you the truth. Um, I mean, I had, I, I never gotten to work with the cast for the, um, for the TV series. I mean, I, I literally um, did Chucky in my house. Um, I have, I, um, the, we, when my first wife played keyboards and she did scales every day, which I was gonna kill myself. <laughs> so we sound insulated the room and, and we kind of made it, um, you know, so you could really play music in there, which means the sound dies immediately. It's designed to, that to happen, and um, when we we tried it, everybody went crazy and said, "Yeah, this great sound in here, and let's do it. Let's do it in your house." So, I think, I, yeah, because usually in ADR you have to go into a studio, but he happened to have a weird studio on accident. Yeah, had a studio. <laughs> great. And there's a guy called Mobile Mike, and he gives me a suitcase and. Um, and then he runs the board. Well, thank you so much, Brad. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but I didn't answer your question. He <laughs> was like, uh, we have a soundproof room, was the answer to that question. Yeah, so <laughs> I did tell you, right? it was, I had a lot of fun. I got to be with the cast, and, um, and, I, um, and I actually had to do a little work with them, and, um, I had fun teasing them and making their life as difficult as I possibly could. Sure. Hi, this is a question coming from a person that's tired all the time. Um, <laughs> um, how do you... <laughs> anyway, this, how, this, is the, this is for both of you. How do you keep your energy up during like the late night shoots or if you're waiting all day? Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, I drink a lot of caffeine, and also, this is like a boring answer, but it's the truth. I make sure um, to not eat a lot of sugar. If I like can avoid that, uh, my energy can be kind of steady. It's like the secret I figured out. Um, so on the days that I'm working, I try to not eat sugar, which seems like an insane answer, but try it, it kind of fucking works. <laughs> What's your uh, caffeine beverage of choice? Oh, black coffee all day long. I must have drank so much black coffee today. Um, yeah, how about you? Um, well, I'm kind of into Dunkin' lately. Yeah, yeah. In New York, I kind of live by three different Dunkins on the same block, and they have this sparked energy drink. I try not to drink them all the time, but they're what you're like. Hey, Dad, how do you keep your energy up, young man? I pace around. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I basically tease people. Yeah, me too. Um, I talk to people. Um, and um, I drink a lot of tea. And what's your favorite kind of tea? Um, well, uh, when I'm home, I have PG tips, but when I'm, you know, on, I, it's, you know, sometimes it's only Lipton, you know. Yeah. Love Lipton. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. Let's get down to the important stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hi. This question is for, well, I'm sorry. I'm not used to hearing the echo when I talk. Hi. This question is for uh, Fiona. Nico has been through, or Nika has been through so much in the series. Are you, are you involved at all creatively? <laughs> the way she's tortured, like, do you come up with it? And what more could they do to her other than kill her? Um, I mean, the short answer is no, right? Actors, we don't really have any control, is the truth. We're like puppets. 
But uh, Don Mancini, over the years, has become a good friend. So when he came up with the great idea of chopping my arms and legs off, I did get a courtesy phone call, and he was like, I got this great idea. <laughs> and he was on Zoom, and the like, smile on his face when he was like, and then you wake up and you scream bloody murder, ha. Huh? Um, and he, he pretended that I got to approve, but I thought it was a great idea, right? It's so brutal. Um, and now I cost a fortune, because you have to green screen every fucking shot I'm in. <laughs> so it's a terrible idea, but, um, yeah. Did that answer your question? I feel like we're both delirious. <laughs> no, it did. Thank yeah. you. I have no control. That's the answer. Awesome. <laughs> uh, for Fiona, how did you first get involved in the franchise? Did Don approach you? Was it your dad's idea? Like, how did that come to be? Yeah, so uh, so I had done True Blood, and I was like a you know waitress doing um, acting here and there. I would work like maybe twice a year, and they were casting Curse of Chucky. Um, I got an audition for Barbara, the sister, the like bitchy sister. I, t I tend to play villains as opposed to like screen the heroine. I don't know if you guys uh, anyway, whatever. I don't know why. But, but there was a phone call, I think, between my dad and Don. So I auditioned for it, but obviously nepotism helped and I'm <laughs> deeply grateful. <laughs> um, it felt like um, winning a kind of lottery, I think. So I auditioned for it, um, I tested for it, but I think certainly there was enthusiasm given my last name. Happened to them. <laughs> there was something, she got it, he believed that, yeah. That a killer doll could hunt me, isn't that yeah. sweet? <laughs> How did you get the acting bug, like, did, was it just naturally inherent, or? He, um, I, I've been around it my whole life, I can't imagine, I, I, there's not a time when I don't remember being around it, and what was it, when I was a kid, did I, I mean, I don't know. I wanted it when I was a kid, right? And then not as a teenager, because I hated everything as a teenager. Yeah, she was like, it was obvious that she was gonna be an actress. I remember uh, one of the agents said after he met her, when she was just like five or six, said, um, you know, I just met Fiona and I can tell, you know, in a few years, she's going to be in my office. Wait, how about you, Dad? When did you know that you wanted to be an actor? How old were you? 16. 16? Yeah. When did you do your first play? Are you doing an interview? Yes, I got an interview. It was their job. Just... Um, yeah, no, I, uh, I, um, yeah, when I was 16, I did summer stock, and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, how's it going? Uh, uh, for both of um, Favorite line from the franchise? Like favorite thing you ever said in the movies and TV show? What do you got? I got nothing. Come on! You have all the good lines. Yeah. He has all the best lines. The deal is, I can't remember my life. I don't know what I said. <laughs> do you guys, what's your favorite Chucky line? Nobody fucks with the chalk. Nobody mm. fucks with the chalk. There you go. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, for me, it's, um, I mean, he, Chucky does say some snappy stuff. But, you know, the, my problem is, is, um, is balancing the humor and the, this underbelly of, um, terror at, at, of, uh, Oblivion, and um, and um, the the um, the love of murdering. <laughs> you know, Chucky loves his job, so it's uh, yeah. Um, he he'll do the laugh. And when I was growing up, the coolest thing about me when I was a kid was I was Chucky's daughter, which all the kids in the neighborhood knew. Uh, and he'd do the laugh one time a year on my birthday, which is the day before Halloween. So the kids oh, wow. would gather and they'd be like, he's gonna do it. 
And we get one fucking laugh. So if he doesn't do it, know that it's not because of you. He never did it. <laughs> hi. hi. Uh, oh, hi again. I know you. You know me. <laughs> I know you both of you. Anyway, um, my question is for both of you. Um, so I know that sometimes, uh, in order to get into character, certain actors will go deeper into the lore of their characters or like hold specific character truths, um, some of which are not necessarily in the script. I was wondering if either of you had anything specific like that that you utilized to get into character. Exactly. You got a good one. What? No, you say it. What's your, what, what's your, because I asked him this question a hundred times before I played Charles Lee Ray. I was like, all right, what's the deal with Charles Lee Ray? What makes him tick? What did I say? Come on! <laughs> I don't remember what well, I said. Well, answer it now and I'll tell you the same thing. I can't remember what I said. I don't know what I would have told you. <laughs> well, no, but what's the answer to the question? Um, the answer is, is anything, it's when you look for a meaning, it has to affect you or it's not good. I mean, it can, can't sound, you can, you know, write something for yourself that sounds like a good story so that it's lore, but that doesn't work because, because it doesn't mean anything. Right. So, um, so you, you kind of get to stuff, I mean, you've, if you're terrified of something, then you find something you're terrified of and you don't tell anybody. Because the second you start talking about it, it's counter help, you know, it's like a healthy thing to talk about something that's bothering you. But if you don't talk about it, it still bothers you, right? That's the idea. So it's reverse psychology. But did you it's make yourself sicker. <laughs> did you have a thing for Charles Lee Ray that made him tick? Yeah. Are you not going to talk about it? Not tell you. <laughs> you don't get to know. I remember. <laughs> that was it. Now I'm not telling you. It's Roscoe, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, but it's not. You know, it's not like. I mean, I get lore, and and um, no, it's. I mean, working as an actor is not about lore. It's about meaning, and and trying to trying to be very alive and in the moment. All right, uh, my question is for both of you. Um, I know uh, father-daughter uh, relationships and daughter-father relationships are better than best friend relationships. So what's it like to uh, work with your best friend? And do you guys get to spend more time together than you would if you weren't working together? That's a great question. And the answer to that is a resounding yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, when we were doing the show, um, we were both in Canada, and um, we her apartment was right next to my apartment. Um, we even had a little ha private hallway between the two, and Fiona cooked me dinner every <coughs> night and oh. every day. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, so we... We saw each other constantly. And, um, you know, we listened to documentaries together, and, or we didn't, you know. I would go off and do something, and she would go, but we worked a lot during that time. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you I, know. I got a really cheesy thing to say. Um, one of the, there's so many things, I know people usually say this, but it's really true. There's so many things I'm grateful for with this, Franchise, it's ridiculous. But one of the main things is um, I, I get to really spend time with my dad, which most adults don't. And I lost my mom when I was kind of young, so it like, or when she was too young, so it really kind of means a lot to me. <laughs> so when we were up in Canada, I was spent, you know, how many adults spend like a month hanging out with their dad? for work, like very weird. I mean, maybe it's not weird in other cultures or whatever, but um, it was something I was really grateful for. And we were, he's cool, 
He's fun. <laughs> you guys should hang out with him sometime. <laughs> Is that last day on set together tough? Like, like you know that now you're both going in different directions afterwards? Um, well, it was Christmas yes. afterwards, and so Fiona came home for Christmas. Oh. Yeah, she does I that every home. year. Yeah, and I come over Christmas. I told her to don't even think about not coming for Christmas. <laughs> oh. I was, and, and also, I live in Portugal, which is kind of far away, so wow. this is like a whole, you know. Anyway, it's very cute for the Duraffs. Thank you guys for watching the show and keeping this going, because it's... We're really grateful for it. It feels like some fucking lottery or whatever. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Please welcome to the stage, John Feldman. <laughs> Next up, we have Courtney Gaines. <laughs> and please welcome to the stage, John Franklin. The child shall lead them. <laughs> <laughs> so 40 years ago today, what was the premiere night like for you guys? <laughs> the premiere? Yeah. There was no premiere. We I went to see it on Sunset Boulevard, Hollywood, to see the movie. It was there was no premiere, right? Yeah. No, it just happened that it was I think it was Hollywood Boulevard, like a rundown theater. And I was there with some friends and we bumped into Courtney and his friends. So we're like Oh, wow, really cool. There was no red carpet, no... That's how low budget it was back then to make that movie. There was no premiere. Right? I didn't see it. No premiere. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't invited to the show you guys went to. I you just got on the tour just like last year. On the... That's true. That's true. There was no invite. Wow. Paid a great leading you. question. Good job. Very good. <laughs> okay, so if anybody has any questions, we'll have you line up here in the middle so you can speak into the microphone. Don't be shy. And ask a good one like that last villain question. What villain would you have? <laughs> in, in, in the rows of the corn. Throw me some curveball like that, because I'll totally blow it. Hi, Dave. Hi, how are you? Well, how are you? Looking snazzy as always. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so, John, this one's for you. Okay, thank so, you. 40 years ago, we didn't have too much representation of cult leaders <laughs> that we saw on you know, TV and film. Later on, maybe even a past president, uh, we, we have seen aspects of that. But what did you take your inspiration from? I had just done, I just moved from Chicago, like six weeks earlier before I got the part. And I had just been doing a play where I played a possessed kid and um, and then I just, when I got the part, which was you know, right away, because they wanted somebody over 18 that were looking younger, um, I just started watching like late night preachers. No, there were no boy preachers at that time. You know, I was just watching them and kind of soaking up and adding a little bit of, and I've always wanted them to be charming too, especially with the kids, like you know, brushing her face. I just thought that was so creepy. But I just so I, I didn't want them to be like in your face evil, you know, just, you know, I think, the best villains are just charming. So, thank you. <laughs> Hi, um, my question is for all of you. Uh, but first, I have to say that I rewatched this movie this week, and it is still like the epitome of the best kind of '80s horror movie. And it's hilarious and terrifying, and everything that you would want a Stephen King movie to be. Well, thank you. Um, so my question is, I know obviously it was quite a few years ago, but um, what was your favorite um, behind the scenes thing that happened to you guys on set? I'll take that one, it's an easy one. So my first day um, was the first thing you see when I come out of the farm field, you know, uh, when, they have, when they hit the kid and then he, when she has the dream sequence, he pops up and, uh, and scares her. 
Well, they really did that to her. They snuck him under and it scared. She jumped back like 10 feet. It was awesome. It was the best prank I've still seen on a film to this day. So <laughs> it was my first scene, my first day. It's a pretty special moment. There you go. Thank you. What do you, what you guys got? Yeah. What was the question? Most memorable? Back scene. Most back vulnerable, scene. yes. The back scene. I, I, most vulnerable? <laughs> <laughs> I, it was my first movie, and all I remember was my first scene was carving a pentagram into my chest, and it was taking a while, and it was a, the guy came in and showed me the knife, and it was a tube of blood. The guy had the bucket, he was pumping it, you know, and I was going to go like this, and the blood was going to pop tip. And they're like, okay, John, you got like, you know, an hour and a half before we do the shoot this. And I was like, I just went in the other room and started doing sit-ups and push-ups. That's, you know, the director came and he goes, I've never seen an actor do so many sit-ups and push-ups in my life. I go, do my shirts off in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I guess one of the coldest scenes was when they had to tie it on the cross. And this sort of pivots, so it goes down. And they... Everyone was gone. It was like you know, midnight, 3 a.m., and it was like bare minimum crew, and it was like 20 degrees. It was like you breathe and you see your breath, and they kept lowering me between every take, you know, either to load the film with the camera or to cover, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, cover me up. And I finally just say, you know, stop it. Just stop covering me up. Just leave me up there. Shoot, shoot. Let's get out of here. And the crew just went, yay. <laughs> so that was fun. Sure. Thank you. Hi, everybody. This is a question for everybody. I know they've made a lot of Children of the Corn movies. I think there's 11 now, <laughs> not counting the short that they made as well. I think that was on one of the Blu-rays. But would you like to be involved in another Children of the Corn sequel, or are you kind of done? I know John's been in yeah. Right, yeah. part six. Right. I was so lucky to be able to you know, co-write Children of the Corn number six. And it was really neat writing Isaac's dialogue for you know, my favorite line was, I don't have a soul. <laughs> um, I would definitely come back. I don't know how, you know, maybe you've, I don't want to spoiler alert how number six ends, but it's like, you know, so. But anything's possible. It's a magic movie. I was in a coma in the, from the, after the first movie for 17 years. So. Re coma. Oh. <laughs> um. Yeah, there's, I was maybe supposed to do something in 666, that didn't happen. I was maybe supposed to do a cameo in uh, the sci-fi one, and I would, had a convention to do, and then there was weather problems, and they didn't make it. So it hasn't happened yet, but um, I'm like, they want to bring Malachi back, you know? They pay me enough money. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it for scale. <laughs> Plus 10. Plus 10. <laughs> They'll probably do another remake, because they've already done remade it two times, I think. Yeah, nobody's... Nobody called me about that, huh? <laughs> I didn't get a call either. Well, maybe you get a cameo in the next one, hopefully, if they do another one. Yeah. They probably will. Yeah. Could be. Unless they're next to say 12 now or something. Yeah. So. Day three, Sunday, Monster Mania. Get, standing in line for John Cleese. My last main autograph. Already got Lynn Shays. Had my son stay in line while I got hers. So we're getting there. We're almost done with photographs. I might get one more. Met up with my friends Nick and Eddie. They finally made it. There's Lynn Shay over there. She's doing selfies. She's very nice. So now I'll get my last main one and I'm finished. And there's there's Mr. Cleese coming in now. Yes, sir. Woo! Once I get his, one one other little autograph, do some shopping. So follow us on this adventure. All right, got all our autographs. Now we're doing a little shopping, looking around. See what we can find. Hard, hard part over. Oh 
always think about getting one of these. I haven't got one yet, but pretty cool. Look at the Thelma. So we gotta get that for mommy. <laughs> Thelma. see any I really can't live without. If they had the Jack Nicholson, I'd get it. Like the crazy teddy bears. And we move forward. There is a, a movie I want over here, but a couple movies I might get. Just looking around right now, seeing what they have. There's real human bone jewelry. Get you some real human bone jewelry over there. <laughs> to me, that's a little bizarre. I, I couldn't go that far to buy human bone jewelry. Go down the middle here, see what we have. I don't even think I went down this middle aisle yesterday. Hey, you know, you want to know how much this lens worth? What? $12. Oh, wow. It's kind of expensive. Kind of expensive. <laughs> really? There's some more of these for that you like. How's it going? Hi, how are you? My son's into this kind of stuff. Okay, what's your favorite? Probably the Hercules Beetle. Okay, cool. I really like a Goliath Beetle. I think those are really fun. Um, what else do I like? Um, like Mothma is the Atlas Beetle. Do you like the Atlas Beetle? Yeah, the Atlas Beetle is my favorite. Pretty cool. I got that one off of him, uh, Jason's mom. I bought that one. Look at, Look at the Reagan, that's pretty cool. 360. Look yeah. at the Ghoulies, a thousand. Wow. That's a lot. The Chucky one's cool. Did you get that one off of him? Is that it? <laughs> yeah, that is cool. Chucky. Cool Jason bus. Lots and lots of things to buy. We're going to look around a bit, so follow us on this adventure. So we're just sitting in one of the rooms. There's Eugene Clark. We got uh, Mike Gross over here from Family Ties. Oh, and look over there. We got an Amish Michael. Amish Michael Myers, of all people. See if I can get a better view of him. 
That's great. Yeah, we're just chilling. We're done with our autographs, done shopping. Me, we're all wore out, all four of us. It's been a long weekend. This this monster mania was mania was a killer. The long lines, the long lines, and we're just exhausted. And uh, lost an hour. Yeah, lost an hour of sleep last night, so it's been rough. But I will show the haul when I get home. Everything we bought and autographs we got, yeah, as always. You got. Yeah, the smaller wallet <laughs> I have now, and uh, so well, we will do that and. Uh, we're gonna go out to Cracker Barrel and eat our dinner before they head back to New York and we head back to Gettysburg. And uh, so yeah, we had a good time and all. So uh, follow us on this adventure. Well, we finally made it back and boy, we tired. We had a hard long weekend. It was a lot of fun, too much fun. Sometimes too much fun to wear you out. But like I promised, I'm gonna show you a haul from uh, Monster Mania in Cherry Hill. I'm gonna let my son take over from here. He's going to show you what he got, then I'll show you everything I got as well. So here we go. Four of you want to tell him, show him what you got. All right. So I got my sister these um, earrings. They're like a plastic bag with like fish in them. Um, and then I also got my sister this necklace with a big, um, geode of amethyst. And then I got myself a frog. And that's a real tree frog, folks. That ain't fake. That's real. And the guy that he sold it to him told him to keep it out of the light. And also out of away from the bathroom, the moisture to lose its color. So we decided. Well, Forbes decided a good place to put it is under his uh, in his by his bunk bed under the top and the bottom bunk on the wall there between yeah. on the bottom bunk, so it won't get light and uh, keep dry. So he got a moth last time, if you remember, but that's what he got. All right, I'll show you what we did. Well, this is, you know, all this, like I said, all this is going to Forbes in the future anyway to autograph stuff. But I'll show you what we got and some other things we got. I couldn't resist this. Um, I love Motel Hell. So I got Farmer Vincent uh, figure. This is by, uh, who's this by? I can't remember if it's, oh, yes, yeah, Trick or Treat Studios. Really nice figure. Uh, my friend Eddie liked it too. Um, of Farmer Vincent and the pig head with the chainsaw. So I got that figure. And then uh, Creature Features coming up next month. I'm going to film here in Gettysburg. And uh, the Thanksgiving guy is going to be there. So I got this John Carver Toonie Terrors with the turkey head and the axe. And I also got the NECA new figure of Thanksgiving, which just came out. Now this is going right. I forget how much they said online, but I got it for thirty-five dollars, and I'm gonna have him autograph that as well. It's a nice figure. Then, as always, I always pick up a couple of different movies. So this, we was laughing about this one. It's one of them B-rated horror films, but it's got some uh, good actors in it. It's got uh, David Knopf from American Werewolf in London makes an appearance in here, and a couple other famous. Uh, Nonington, I mean. A couple other famous actors make an appearance. It's called Attack of the Killer Chickens, the movie. It looks like chickens from outer space. So that'll be a fun movie to watch. I like some of them lame ones sometimes. And then uh, I heard this is a really good movie. I've never seen it. And it's 
Ron Howard's little brother, Clint Howard, ice cream man. Uh, and everybody's surprised I've never seen it, but I haven't, so. And then, oh, I got my daughter this shirt from Hot Topic. It's uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, and she'll see it in a minute. I got my wife some coffee like I always did. I got her, it's called Deadly Grounds Witch's Brew. It's chocolate raspberry race. So let her try that, see if she likes it. Now, as far as autographs, uh, here's my first one, the Army of Darkness comic book. And I got Sam Raimi to sign it. He said, beware the evil dead and put the ghost symbol on it and the signature. And also had him sign, which he printed instead of signing. But that's all right. This uh, Evil Dead 2 Evil Ash mask. So I had him sign that one. And I got the... That's Trick or Treat Studios as well. It's a good mask. And so is this one the pumpkin from Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. And I got uh, Ellie, which is Stacy Nelkin. And Dick Warlock, which played the uh, assassin. And also he was Michael Myers in Halloween 2. And I got Tom Atkins, and he put uh, he played Dr. Chalice, and he's got stopping on there. So I've got three signatures. I'm going to add to it. Um, can't remember the name of the director, but he's going to be a creature feature as well. Tommy Lee Wallace, that's his name. He's going to be there, and we'll have him sign that as well. And then uh, Katie Seagal was there from, you know, um, from uh, Ted Bundy. Or, uh, not, I always say Ted Bundy. Al Bundy show. And she also played Leela in Futurama, The Voice. So I got this nice Leela figure, had her sign it in purple. And come to find out, I paid $60 for this figure. And it book price is for $80. So it's an $80 figure on the market. And I got it for $60, a really good deal. And I uh, added another autograph to my children, the corn canvas that you've seen before. And... Uh, John Fillon was there who played Amos and he put it's my birthday with the pentagram that was carved on his chest if you remember him in the movie he also played in uh, Tombstone and a couple other movies so now I've got uh, John's which played Isaac I've got Courtney Gaines that played Malachi and now I've got Fillon who played Amos and plus the director up at the top so I'm just going to keep adding to it if there's any more it comes around and I got that then I had this Talking Chucky doll, and I was able to get uh, two autographs on there, and I got Ch Chucky uh, and his daughter, which uh, Fiona, which plays on the new Chucky on Netflix, and uh, so the, I'm real excited about that. Um, he wrote, don't fuck with the Chucky, and signed it, and she wrote, you want to play mother effort <laughs> let's play so she she wrote that one of her lines and then i couldn't resist this this is a really nice figure it's one of the older ones that's i don't even think it's they make it anymore um but he wrote let me out of this effing box and and she put the same quote his daughter and uh wow it was neat to meet chucky i mean he's iconic in acting and and a great artist and i got both their signatures on there and and i'm really happy with that and i bought that at spencer's with my buddy eddie and nick and he bought uh, nick bought this one at spencer's and got it autographed then my final object well no i got a few more uh i gotta show you but the final one i got signed was here and this is this is really cool i got the helmet from uh from the Monty Pythons and uh, had him sign it, The Dark Knight. And, and and I'm really proud of that. It says it's only a flesh wound and he signed it. And he's getting up there in age. He's like 80 years old now or, or, or older, but pretty nice guy from what I can tell. But he's the one that started all the Monty Python movies and stuff. And then a few, a few eight by tens I got autographed i got more objects this time uh got john lovitz needless to say <laughs> he wasn't a very friendly guy 
which I really don't care. I got him because he's pretty famous. So I got his autograph. Wonderful lady, Leah Shea, plays in the Insidious movies. She wrote Into the Further We Go. I was telling her how much I loved her, and she's such a great actress. Then I couldn't resist. I got Michael Gross. He played, if you older people remember, Family Ties. He played the father on there, and he also played in Tremors. A couple movies he's famous for. And now this is really cool. My buddy from New York, Eddie, got me this. This is Larry David, uh, co-writer of Seinfeld. This is a, a, a really nice autograph here. Um, probably close to $700 autograph it could go for. Like I said, all these are going to my son. And he also got me uh, Brett Michaels from Poison. Um, lead singer. And that's wonderful because he knows I like Poison. And he's actually right here from Pennsylvania in Mechanicsburg, where so his hometown is. So I think we did pretty good. Had a pretty nice haul. And uh, he also, Eddie... Got me this print, art print that he had that's really neat because he knows Shining's my favorite movie. Uh, I love Eddie and Nick. They're really good friends. I, I hate when they go. we go home and do our separate ways because they live in Long Island and I live here in Pennsylvania. So we only get to see each other every five months or so, but we stay in touch and that's what the main thing. It says Red Room. It's got Jack as a little stuffed doll with the 237 key and the typewriter really cool i like that really nice put that with my shining stuff so that's the haul i hope you enjoyed this uh, been a fun weekend but a tiring one so uh till next time it's been uncle jimmy with jimmy's train station travel adventures i please ask you again to subscribe to my channel hit that like button feel free to leave comments suggestions till next time it's been uncle jimmy with jimmy's train station travel adventures goodbye